signal-to-noise ratio is a term commonly used in the world of telecommunication. What is it? It's the ratio of the amplitude of a desired analog or digital signal to the amplitude of noise in a transmission channel at a specific point in time. So talking about the ratio, that means this is involving a numerator and a denominator. And if the units are the same, this will go unitless. This compares also the level of desired signal to the level of background noise. And this is the signal power. That's the meaningful info over the noise power, the unwanted signal. It is typically expressed logarithmically in decibels. SNR is routinely used to quantify the clarity or strength of electrical signals. It can also apply to any form of signal transmission. You can also say that SNR is a comparison between the relevant and the irrelevant. We have here SNR values and the interpretation. If your calculated value is above 40 decibels, the quality of the signal is excellent. That would be equivalent to 5 bars. The speed, lightning fast, always connected. 25 to 40 decibel, very good signal. That's 3 to 4 bars, very fast, always connected. 15 to 25, poor signal, that's 2 bars only. Easily fast, always connected though. 10 to 15, very poor signal, just one bar. Mostly slow, usually connected. Worse is 5 to 10, no signal, agonizingly slow, almost never connect. Talking about the formulas, how are you going to compute SNR? There are several formulas for this particular term or quantity. One typical formula is this one. It is the ratio of the power signal, that is your P sub signal, to the ratio of the noise signal or your P sub noise. It is unitless because we assume that the numerator has the same unit as the denominator. But you could also compute that in terms of decibel. And if you are talking about decibel, that means you are going to make use of the logarithm. So that's going to be equal to 10 logarithm, whatever the value of your SNR here, with a unitless computation. And SNR, as we know, is the P sub signal over the P sub noise. That's what we have here. But we could also make a variation of the formula. Let's try to have first a recollection of an electric power. Electric power is the rate of energy consumption in an electric circuit. And it is usually measured in joule per second. That would be equivalent to what and the formula for that is power is equal to the voltage times the current. Or simply P is equal to V times I. V being the voltage, I being the current. And if we could recall about Ohm's law, the Ohm's law states that the current is directly proportional to the voltage and inversely proportional to the resistance. That means if you increase the voltage, that would also correspondingly increase the current. If you decrease that, that would also correspondingly decrease the current. On the other hand, if you increase the resistance, that will decrease the current. If you decrease the resistance, that will increase the current. The two of them are inversely proportional. And we could have variants of that, expressing that in terms of V over I to compute the resistance, that is by cross multiplication, or you could also express that in terms of IR, wherein you're going to compute for the voltage. That would also mean cross multiplication. And if we can apply that here for the VI, if we substitute V as in terms of IR, so the V here will now become your IR, and so that will be multiplied to the I, and we know that I times I is I squared, as we have learned from algebra, and the R here remains there. So that gives us another way of computing electrical power with I squared times R. Another way to express power is by substituting I, which is equivalent to V over R. So in place of I there, this time we are substituting I for V over R. And we could see there that the V and the V are both found in the numerator. Therefore, we ended up with V squared and the R occupying the denominator. Now, how could we express the S and R in decibels in terms of voltage and even current? So based on the formula of the P sub signal, using the variance of that in terms of V squared over R, so we can say that V squared sub signal and divided by R sub signal. In similar manner, the P sub noise is equal to the V sub noise squared 
divided by the R sub noise, wherein we understand that the R sub signal is equal to the R sub noise because they are using the same wires. So that is understood to be having the same volume, the same cable, would have the same resistance, whether it's for the R signal or R sub signal or the R sub noise. That means we could simplify our equation into this. This is our P sub signal. This is our piece of noise, and since we made an assumption that the R sub signal is equal to the R sub noise, that means the R sub signal can be cancelled. That would mean equal to 1, because we know any number divided by itself is equal to 1, and uh, it doesn't change anything. And consequently, we end up with a simplified expression on the right side of the equation as 10 times the logarithm of the v sub signal squared divided by the v sub noise squared and if we are going to remember we could also express that in terms of this expression because they are all of the same power we could write them in this manner within the parenthesis because the two of them anyway have the same exponent and if we cannot recall the power rule of logarithm, that is the logarithm to the base b of uh, x to the y is equal to y times the logarithm to the base b x. That means our y here, which is our power for x, becomes the coefficient of our logarithm. So that expression will convert into this. This is our y. This is our original coefficient of the logarithm and the v sub signal will just simply be divided by the v sub noise and since we have two times then we end up with 20 times the logarithm of the v sub signal divided by the v sub noise and that is our way of expressing or computing our SNR in decibels in terms of the voltage. We could also do the same thing in terms of current using the power in terms of I squared R, so the P subsignal can be written as I subsignal squared times R subsignal. And in the same manner, the P sub noise would also be the I sub noise squared multiplied to the R sub noise. Again, with the same assumption that the R sub signal is equal to the R sub noise, so we have the R sub signal equal to the R sub noise here that would be cancelled again, that would be equal to 1. And so we know that any number multiplied to 1 is the number. So that leaves us with 10 times the logarithm of the I sub signal squared divided by the I sub noise squared. And we could also write that in this manner, knowing that the two of them, the I sub signal and the I sub noise, have the same exponent. Again, recalling our power rule of logarithm, we have the logarithm to the base b of x to the y is equal to y times the logarithm of the base b x. And eventually, this is our version in terms of current. So we could compute in terms of voltage, power, and current in decibels. And we have also other formulas computing for the SNR. And SNR is higher when the signal is stronger and the noise is weaker. That means when the value of our SNR is greater than 1, that is a good thing. If it's less than 1, that is a problem. So it can be computed using either voltage or power values or even your current values. Uh, so in this bill, this is our formula, and uh, we could also use the quotient rule here. The quotient rule, it can also be written in this manner. When it is quotient, that's going to be subtraction. When it is product, that's going to be addition. But this is quotient, so that's why our numerator of our formula will be our first term here. The denominator will be the second term here. The same can be said of the voltage and also the current. There's another formula here. If the variance of the signal and noise are known and the signal is zero, you could use this formula. That is the standard deviation of the signal squared divided by the standard deviation of the noise squared. So if the signal and noise are measured across the same impedance. Impedance is the other term that we use for resistance. We use the resistance with the DC circuit. We use impedance with that. AC circuit. SNR can be obtained by calculating the square of the amplitude ratio. Just like that, that would be in terms of the amplitude, where A here is the root mean square amplitude. 
for example, the RMS voltage. A signal of 3.0 volts has a noise corruption of 12 millivolts in a circuit. Both are in root mean square. Calculate the SNR. We used to have this pattern when we solve problems in engineering. We start with a given, followed by the required and the solution. And so for our given, our voltage signal is given as 3.0 volts. Our voltage of noise is 12 millivolts. That is millivolts. And we know that calculators do not interpret prefixes. So we have to convert that into its numeric equivalent. And we know that milli is equivalent to 10 to the negative 3. That's equivalent to 1 over 1,000. And so we could cancel our M and eventually end with 12 times 10 to the negative 3 volts. If we write this in conventional notation, exponent there is negative 3. So we're going to move the decimal point, which is currently at after 2 in the 12. So you're going to move that 3 times to the left. And that would require a padding of 0. Then comes 1, 2. The required is as an R. And utilizing the formula that we derived a while ago from our power version. So we have 20 logarithm of V signal divided by V sub noise. That's 20 logarithm of the quantity V sub signal divided by V sub noise. And that would be equal to 20 logarithm of 3.0 divided by 0 0.012, which is giving us a 250 for 3.0 divided by 0 0.02, and getting the logarithm of 250, that's equivalent to 2.3979409, multiply that to 20, and you end up with a product of 47.9588001 decibels. We could also use the other formula without using the power rule logarithm by simply leaving it in this form the logarithm of the quantity v sub signal over v sub noise squared will be multiplied to 10 again the v sub signal is 3.0 the v sub noise is 0.12 that will cancel the volts and you square the result that 3.0 divided by 0.012 is 250 you square that you end up with 62,500 and getting the logarithm of 62,500 you end up with 4.79588001 and multiply it to 10 you end up with 47.9588001 exactly the same value that we have here when we use the other formula another problem here it's related to power see a kilowatt signal is transmitted through a cable medium with a 50 watt noise determine its signal to noise ratio a kilowatt as we know is a unit of power so that's equivalent to 1000 watts because a kilo is equivalent to 10 to the third so the piece of signal is in other words equal to 1000 watts and our piece of noise is 50 watts and the required is the SNR solution using the power formula of the SNR in this bill you end up with 10 logarithm times the quantity 1000 watts divided by 50 watts so your cancellation of watts will happen and we know the 1000 divided by 50 is equal to 20 and then we are going to compute the logarithm of 20 which is 1.30102996 and multiply that to 10 you end up with 13.0102996 decibel so we have here a problem that states determine the signal to noise ratio for the audio signal series 70 50 40 55 45 and 50 again the given the audio signal series from 70 to 58 required as an R and our solution we have a new formula to solve this and this is our formula from statistics for a population the mu there is our population mean which is the sum of all the values that's the summation of x divided by the number of values which is equal to 6 the population standard deviation indicated by that symbol called that uh, lowercase form of sigma in the Greek alphabet. That's something equal to the square root of the summation of the x minus the mu squared dividing by the number of population. This is actually 6 in our case. Utilizing the formulas that we have seen a while ago, 
computing for the mu, which is our population mean and population standard deviation. We have to start with getting first the mean, which is simply the sum of all the numbers from 70 down to 58, giving us a sum of 318 and dividing it by the number of population, which is 6. And we end up with a quotient of 53. And this would serve as our mean. For the standard deviation, that would only be computed by first getting all the squares of x minus mu and we could start here with 70 minus 53 that will give us 17 because our minuin is greater than our subtrain our minuin is 70 our subtrain is 53 naturally we end up with a positive difference that is 17 u square 17 you are going to end up with 289 the next one is 50 minus 53. This time, our minuin is less than our subtrahend, and we end up with negative 3, and squaring that negative 3 will still give us positive 9, because the square of a negative number is a positive number. It's just like negative 3 times negative 3. Next is 40 minus 53. Again, our minuin is less than the subtrahend, a difference of negative 13. Squaring negative 13 is 169. 55 minus 53 will end up with 2. It's positive 2. You square that and we have 4. 45 minus 53, that gives us negative 8. Squaring negative 8 gives us positive 64. And finally, 58 minus 53 giving us positive 5 and squaring it, you end up with 25. Getting all the uh, numbers from 289 down to 25, getting their sum, we end up with a volume 560. And finally, we determine the population standard deviation by dividing 560 by 6 and whatever the result you square it. 560 divided by 6 by the way is 93.333. This would go on and on because we are, are repeating non-terminating answer. And so we get the square root of that and we end up with 9.6609178311. That is our population standard deviation. And finally, we could compute the SNR by dividing our mu by our sigma. Our mu is 53, our sigma is 9.660917831, and our quotient is 5.4860211. It's greater than 1, that is a good thing. And this is where we're going to end our session. God bless you.